Last time we talked about last time we talked about um, um, arrays and we went through uh, 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 creating something like your, the, the lab thingy that you had. We had we, uh, what do we what do we get? Marxy was an average or something. We went through them one by one. We found out what is maximum, minimum. We did all that. We're going to do almost the same thing over here today, but with one difference. The difference is that first, we're going to be quiet because the teacher is speaking. Number two, what we are going to do is uh, um, we are going to work in a different way. Instead of having uh, a mark for a class, we're going to have say three marks for a student but not for a student three marks for each student in class and then we're going to keep those values and then go through them and do a stat and see what is the average and so on and so forth so we're going to do it that way and we're going to see how we can accomplish this so if i want to if i want to deal with students because now i have I have several students in a class and at the same time I need to be able to individually recognize them and see what marks that person got and what is the person's average. Because of this fact I cannot just get random marks and say I have 40 students in class and then add them all up and do whatever I want to do. That's impossible. I have to keep track of which mark belongs to which student. So I need to get identifiers for each student and keep it somewhere. Something unique that it's impossible to be repeated by mistake. I cannot use people's name. I cannot say John because John is going to be two Johns. I don't know which one is what. Okay? We have few things that are unique. What are the like, I have to check my weight on this thing. Uh, what, uh, what is a unique thing that you have for your, uh, as a student? Student number, I just said you're, really, Smith, you know how many Smiths we have? Okay, so <laughs> Patel, you know, you know how many Patels we have in the world? That's the, by the way, I think it's the largest amount of people in the world carry the, the, the that's the, yeah, that's the, oh yeah, I think Patel is the biggest one in the world. But anyways, I've, I, I've, I've read about it somewhere, but anyways, so we can't do that. But student number is unique. It's impossible for two students to have the same student number, right? So that's what we're going to use. So to be able to have this thing, the first thing we need to have is uh, student numbers. Now, how many student numbers? Let's say a class is not going to grow more than 100 people. That's the maximum. No, 100 students is the maximum thing. Yeah, I could put a defined I put a defined state, you know, with that. I want to say, yes, I could put a defined statement, but I will not. But now nah, I'm not going to do it. So define max number, max student number. OK, and that's going to be 100. So I put that one over here. Now, how am I supposed to? hold the marks for individual students. If I wanted to do it on a spreadsheet or some kind of a, just a second. Oh, it came back. All right. It went to power save mode for some reason. All right. So yeah. So what I wanted to say is that if I want to actually de deal with it on a spreadsheet, this is what happens. You kind of have, you got to say, I have three marks for a student, and I need the student number. So what I need is some kind of a table. So I need one row. Sorry for the, again, artistic things of mine. And with the mouse, it's very difficult. These are supposed to be straight lines, by the way. I think there's a straight line capability in here, is it? It's not. Anyways, so <laughs> these are four straight lines. So this becomes the student number, OK? This becomes the first mark, this is the second mark, and this is the third mark. So we use it like this, okay? So it becomes rows like that, right? And then this is the one that we put in student number zero. This is student number one, student number two, student number three, and four, and it goes down to whatever the number of students are. Are we okay with this? 
Now, if I look at, like so, so I have this array. So this first array I have, this one I created, right? And that's this one, student number, correct? Now I need to create three arrays to be able to hold. Next time I'm going to bring a water gun with me, seriously. And I'm going to go, whoever talks. And then the next day I'm going to bring bow and arrow. OK, so, so, so um, I get distracted easily. So what do I say? Yeah, so I have one array created. I need three more arrays for the other ones. So what I will do, I will quickly, quickly create three arrays for IPC, ULI, and EAC uh, marks. Right? What? Magic. All right. That's why I like to this stuff. So I have things stuck over here. I copy and paste. Yeah. You'll be surprised that lots of people think it's too complicated. They never use it. Anyway, so. So now we have the IPC marks, ULI marks, EAC marks. Let's say they are double values, whatever we want to decide. OK? Um, now, Essentially, when I hold it, when I hold the student number is in element zero of student number array, I'll put the IPC mark in element zero of IPC mark. Then I'll put ULI mark in element zero of that one and EAC mark of that one. So as a result, when I go through names and student numbers and things like that. If I'm dealing with student number four, I know what is the student number. And element four of every and each array holds the relative marks to that student number. Is that something that we are OK with? These call this, because these are parallel arrays, they call it parallel arrays. They hold the information in parallel arrays. So essentially, what I want to do, I need to, I need to know actually how many, how many students do I have. So I need to have an, an integer to hold the number of the students in it. Uh, I need uh, some kind of a, an integer to, to go through loops, because I want to do looping and stuff, uh, go through every individual thing and get the information. So I need an index for a loop. Then what I need to do is to actually ask the, uh, the user to enter what is the actual number of students. I don't know. This class has what? 35? So we're going to put 35 over there. Although the maximum number that we have is 100, but we're going to go 35. I'm not validating anything yet. Okay? I'm just assuming that we are dealing with the same, with the same uh, user. Okay? So after, oh gosh, why is it keep going to power saving mode? And it turns off on me. Pause the recording again. Yeah, so, so we, we get the number of students. And after getting the number of students, we're going to ask the user to enter the individual marks one by one and uh, up to that num thingy that we have, right? One by one, we're going to get it. And we're going to use a for loop because it's easy. I know it starts from 0, goes up to num, and i++. plus plus. So this for loop happens num times, starting from 0 up to num minus 1. So remember. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, actually. Please keep doing that. OK? So, so inside the for loop, i will vary from 0 up to num minus 1. As soon as the for loop ends, what's going to be there? Num. So the value of num at line 16.5 will be num. That's why the for loop broke. Remember that, OK? So that's with all the loops that go like this. The index starts from whatever you have up to this minus 1, if you have less than, OK? And then num will be what is outside. So now what I need to do is to show the row number and one by one start getting the, the values from the user. So first, I have to say this is the, 
the, the, the, the data entry number that we are going. So this is the row number one. It shows what it is. Then it's going to ask for the student number uh, um, that, that I'm receiving, whatever, like, like student number, whatever it is, student number, and puts it in uh, the student number with the corresponding index. And don't forget it's address of student number that we are putting in. And after this, I'm going to get the three marks for the IPC, ULI, and, and uh, the EAC. Okay, so I'm going to say IPC, give me a drop double, put it here, give me a double, put it here, give me a double, and, and it goes so many times. So I fill all the information inside the, inside the table, and that's that. Now, let's say, so down to this point, we have data entry, and that's it, right? Now to this point, we have our data entry, and when it's done, everything's in, entered, it is in a program, now I can go to the next stage for processing that data. First data entry, everything's in an array, and then go for processing. Say, I want to search for a student, and then show the marks of a student, and uh, so, so I'm gonna enter the information, and then you're gonna say, what is student three, four, five, st st student with student number three, four, five, I want to know their marks and their average, if they passed or not. Okay, so we can search and do that. So how do we do it? Um, uh, pretty simple. Because, and, and then I have to keep doing it over and over and over, right? Because it's the first student that searched for it, second student that searched for it. Every single time a search is over, I have to ask, hey, do you want to do more search? I'm going to say yes or no, right? And then, all right. So if that's the case, then... Uh, I'm going to actually uh, need to have a loop that ends when the user wants to end it. It's not a number of things that I'm going to do. It's not like I'm going to do something 35 times. I, user may choose to do it five times or 500 times. It depends on the user, so I need a flag for that. Whenever such a thing is that, you need a flag. And you set that flag to zero because I... Uh, things are not done until the user decides to, to, for it to be done. So this is where I'm going to do search and report. Okay? Oh, oh, oh. Shoot, too late. Pause. Captain would stand there and wait. The camera. Search and report. And at, uh, to do search and report, I have to, so as I mentioned, I'm going to need to have a, a, a loop that uh, will end based on user's needs. So I'm going to say while uh, not done. And in here, I'm going to uh, do whatever needs, needs to be done. Uh, so right at the end, uh, I'm going to ask the user if, if you're done or not. And... Whatever happens over here, at the end of it, it's going to say, done searching, yes or no, one or zero. If it's one, it stops, and zero. And we're going to make this thing look much better. This is just the beginning. We just want to go through it and see how it happens. That's a uh, high-tech way of fixing your monitor. Anyway, so, so the next thing I need to do, uh, so, so we wanted them to actually, uh, so we want the user to actually ask, uh, uh, um, enter a student number, and based on that student number that they are entering, I have to go and look for the student in my database. So look for it, right? This or so I need, I need that integer. I need to get the student number and then search for it. So I'm going to have over here uh, int student number entry. Oh, I can turn it off and on, it comes back. Okay. Uh, sensor standard. Maybe I can go on standard and select and see what happens. Then. Anyways, so I have something here. So. 
Uh, now that I got the student number, I have to go through all the students and see which one is what, right? And go through it and see. So what I need over here, I have to, I have, to have a for loop again, starting from zero, i less than num, i plus plus. Okay, now in here I have to check if the, why am I typing it, I have it here. So, so then I have to say, then I have to say if the student number entry is equal to student number i, it means I found the student. Now that I found the student, I'm going to report about it. What is the report? Say I want to show the student information. Since now I know where the information is, I can simply display whatever I want to display, right? Now you can do your average thingy, whatever you want to do, okay? So in this place, it's a report. I have the student information. Now I can do whatever I want to do with the student. So, what if the student is not there? How do I display if it's not found? How can I, how can I display if it's, if this, how can I find, how can I sense, detect that the search wasn't successful? Else over, after if? Don't forget, it's searching every single one. So you're going to say, you're going to see one report and 100 not fun, not fun, not fun, not fun, not fun. Same thing? That's else. You just, new, another version of else. How do we do it? How do we do it? Anyone? How do we do it? Flag, 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 flag. Remember, flag is always your friend. Whenever you want to, whenever you want to set a state of something, put a flag for it. You want to see if it's found or not? Create a flag called found. Int found. There is another way of doing it, okay? And then right before the search, be pessimistic. Say found is zero. And then in here, if the search is successful, you make found. One. And then in here you can say print uh, if. Now you can say if found. If not found, sorry, actually. Print f not found. And go to new line. Are we okay with this? Okay, it's a very simple and straightforward thing. So let's go through it and see what happens. We had series of arrays that are parallel, which means uh, corresponding uh, indexes in them refer to the same records for the entry that we have. And then uh, we uh, do the data entry for every single individual and put them right in there. And then after that, we browse through the information one by one through a loop and uh, do some processing, whatever the processing is supposed to be. Um, just to run it and see how it works, it's very straightforward type of thing. So please enter number of students. I'm going to put four over here, not too much. Student number one, two, three, four. Uh, mark whatever, that's the first mark, two, three, four, five. That's another mark. Okay, and three, four, five, six. In the other class, I had somebody asking, does it have to be in order? No, I'm just, this is just test data. I'm just testing, okay? So um, four, five, six, seven. And I have something over here. And there you go. Now it's going to the search. Please enter the student number. Now I'm gonna say two, three, four, five. Now it's gonna say student marks are this, all right? Searching done. I'm going to say no. Sorry, could have put something nice over there. I didn't. All right, student number, I'm going to put four, five, six, seven. Now it shows the information for that student. Okay, now say I want to, uh, I'm not done. Now this one, I'm going to put 999. Hit enter. It's going to say 
done searching. So it didn't work. What did happen? What did I do wrong? Good, actually. When it doesn't work, we have something to work on, OK? It was supposed to say not found, right? Done searching. Yes, at least this works, hopefully. Yes. All right, let's see what, what went wrong. So I'm saying if student number is a match, found is one. Oh, my sincere apologies. Found is supposed to be right before the search, not before the user interface. While not done is the user interface. Search is the for loop. So I had to make it. So first time I found it, it made it one. But it never went back to zero the next time I tested it. That's why. All right. So now if I run it, that's got to get fixed. Oh, I have to enter. So I'm going to put only two. <laughs> OK. One, two, three, four. Something, something, and something. Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, something, something, and something. As enter student number, I'm going to put 5678, 5678, and that's that one. No, and I'm going to put 9999, and not found. Perfect. Done, and we are good. Very bad program with respect to user interface and stuff. It was very ugly. We didn't mention anything nice, but we're going to make it work, okay? We're going to make it better as we go. So, That's parallel arrays that we did not talk about. And the reason that I talked about it right now is, is to mention why it's better not to use it. So. First, let's talk about structures. See what structures are, and then we'll continue. A structure is a package. A structure is a package, OK, in which you can put, you can design it to hold certain things. So it's not the package itself. It's the schematics of a package that you like to have. It's the definition of a package that you, that you would like to have. I want to have a package that is capable of holding two doubles, one integer, and a log. So that's what you mentioned. And then you can actually say, I want three of those packages. Or I want a package like that called this and that. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? OK? So structures work like that. What is the syntax for it? How does it work? The syntax for it is pretty straightforward, so struct. That's the syntax. Um, mm. Box. Yes. And this box has integer um, height, integer width, and integer length. That's a box. It has three integers in it. OK? And yeah, and something like that. I don't know. Whatever. Like, um, and double. Give me something that goes for a box with a double. Three. Huh? Three. Wait. That's a good idea. So, nice. Now I have a box, OK? And it has these stuff in it. I did not create a box. I just mentioned what I wish a box to look like. That's all. We OK with this? All right? Now, if I want to actually create a box, I can, I can come to my program. As you see, this is a definition. It's a global thing. You put it up there that everybody can see it. But then you come wherever you want to use it. You have to repeat struct, box, and then over there say, my box. So now my box is a structure that has height, width, length, and weight. Are we OK with this? All right. Now, now how to access every and each thing? So if I created a box, and I want to initialize that box to certain values, I have to initialize it almost like an array 
but an array that has different types of elements. Now, this one has three integers and a double, right? So this is supposed to be something like this, 4, 6, 8, and over here is going to be 12.34. And that's how you initialize it. So the first one goes to first, second to second, third to third, and fourth to fourth, and that becomes your structure, initialization. But that's initialization, and that's the only way you can do it, okay, at, this, at the same time. If you want to set it up member by member, that's a different story. So if you actually want to set it up to something, you have to say my box dot height is set to, I don't know, 10, and my box dot width is, oh, width, uh, it's weight, oh, width, width is 20, and my box uh, length is 15, and this one's weight is 15. this much, whatever the unit is, we didn't mention. So this is how to set the individual, value, uh, individual fields. So the dot that we are talking about over here is actually apostrophe S in English. My box's weight is 10, my box's width is 20, my box's length is 15, my box's uh, weight is 123.45. Did I say width? Do we? But, uh, width, yeah. Yes. It's not just that I can type, I can't read either. Yes. Uh, I think length is G. Yeah, length is oh, yeah, 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 sorry. It would still work, right? Since you define this and there. Yeah, the but your yeah, but your teacher is going to. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for the spell checking. Yes, uh, is the weight wrong too? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's up? So that makes two of us. Uh, if you have one of those elements uh, not uh, not one of those is array. What can a box have several? Number of bottles. No. Uh, Those air package things. No, but yes, it's several things, size of stuff. So, anyway, can you give me something? Number An of array? Labels. Labels. No, uh, so integer, no, but that's just a variable. Uh, what do you put several things in a box? <laughs> Seriously, my brain doesn't work. Suddenly, I went blank. Um, integer, in, integer <laughs> bottles. Twelve. We want to know double. So it means each bottle has how much thing in it. Okay. So we have 12 bottles in there, and each bottle can have different amount of value in it. One is half full, the other one is full, so on and so forth. Okay, so bottle, bottle uh, capacities, <laughs> no, uh, bottles, that's it. Okay, so if we have something like this and you want to initialize that, then you have to exactly put that one over there. If you want to initialize an array, what do you put? Curly bracket, curly bracket. So you have to first put the curly bracket for the array, and then you have to fill it in. One and a two and a three, a four, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve things in there. Okay? Not necessarily one, two, three. Assume that these are different values. So four will set this one, six will set this one, eight will set this one, twelve will set this one, and the twelve doubles will go to twelve doubles. Okay? Are we okay? Assuming these are doubles. Point, 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 point. If it's integer, it will work too, by the way, because the compiler recast it automatically. But hey, are we okay? Are we okay? So that's how you set it up. If you want to set the individual stuff, works like this. If you want to extract their address for scanf, it works the same thing. So, so you can actually say. Uh, 
scanf percent d if i want to read the width and put it inside the thing i have to say address of width my box dot width so Don't your thank you so that's that so if you want to get it the, the the address extraction comes right at the bottom at the at the beginning of it so and if you want to do it for say the arrays that we have over this so I want to I want to set up the ninth bottle value inside that so it's going to be ninth bottle will be bottles All right. So that's the ninth bottle, my box ninth bottle, and that's that. Are we okay? That eight is not wrong. It's actually the ninth bottle yeah. because the index thing. So that I did not make a mistake. <laughs> Are we okay with this? Any problem? Question? Suggestion down to here? Anything? One? So we understand how the structure, oh, by the way, if you want to set two structures to uh, send what set, set one structure to another, uh, it works like this. So struct, this Visual Studio's automatic stuff sometimes go drive you nuts. So box B, I can act, B, I can actually say, I can actually say over here, I can actually say over here, B is set to my box. You can actually do that. So assignment operator, and only assignment operator, works between two boxes, two structures, two structure instances. You cannot say less than. What do you mean? Like, well, think about it. Can I say box one less than two? What do you mean by less than? It applies to so many things, so it can't do that. For that, you go to OP244 and learn how to define what that is. It's called an operator overload. We don't care about it now. OK, so assignment operator works perfectly. All right? And to create arrays of structures, that's no problem. I can do 12. Now I have 12 boxes. And in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to set box number 4 to my box. Same thing. Are we OK with this? Do we understand the syntax of structures, how to build one? Any question about this one, two, and three? Break, go wash your set face. OK? Pause. With the parallel arrays, this is what we have written. Correct? Now we want to do, now we want to, we want to simplify this. So this doesn't make sense. Why do I have four different entities combined in an awkward way to be able to? Yes. It's because sometimes IntelliSense goes bananas. Let me just control F5. Now it's actually compiling properly. Let me just see. It's just Visual Studio. It's Visual Studio going crazy. Let me just close it. Well, it's OK. It, it, it's OK. okay. It's, yeah, it's pro yeah, it's. Mm. There used to be a refresh thingy that redrew the screen, but. There's a clean solution in build. Huh? If you go build and then clean solution, it like refreshes it. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to change any, everything any, anyway. OK, so are we OK in here? Oh, it, it's um, it's oh, OK, now it's good now. All right. So attention, 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 attention. Let's do it. OK, so I was saying why having four parallel arrays, four arrays over here for essentially information about individual people. Instead of doing that, we just learn how to do create packages of things, right? So instead of having something like that, it would be much better to actually create a structure for the student marks and then go from there. So saying I have a student mark, 
structure with the student number, IPC mark, ULM, and each of them one thing. So it, this package, this container of mine, has four things in it. There's student number and three uh, double values. So instead of having these things, what I can do in here is simply creating struct. Oh. Creating struct, student marks, and then create, uh, what do I call it in here? SD marks, okay? And then have over here maximum student number. Okay? Everything else is the same. Instead of having four arrays, I'm having one array that each element has four items. That just makes sense. I don't need to keep track of which index is what. They are all in one package. So in here, when I'm actually getting the information, instead of getting the information like that, I simply say address of st marks dot student number. And the student number is going to go in there. Instead of IPC marks like this, I can simply say address of st marks dot IPC mark. ST marks I. That's my bad. And so on and so forth. So instead of having the element of the uh, individual arrays, I'm going to say uh, ST mark I's student number. ST mark I's IPC mark. So the student number of ST marks I, the IPC mark of student marks I, and I keep going like that. I do not need to, I do not need to have four separate arrays. All right? And in here, the exact same thing. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, get the student entry, one by one go through the array of structures, check the student number, and if you find the student number, then display the other contents of, of the same structure. So like this, there is absolutely no difference in execution. The only difference is that instead of having four separate arrays to keep the information about the student, I'm going to have one array of students and put all the information about that student over there. Are we okay with, are, are we, are we okay with this? Are we okay? There, that was the reason I want to have the parallel array and structures together. Because why do we need structures? Because of the parallel arrays not to have parallel arrays, to be able to package things in the same, uh, in, uh, patch, package all relative, re relative information into one uh, structure and use it as is. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Now, now that we know the structures, let's see what are other good things about structures. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but when we were talking about functions, I mentioned that you can have only one return statement. I don't know if I mentioned it or not. The good style of programming is to have only one return statement in a function, okay? And a function has only one return type. Is that correct? So you can return integer, you can return double. So essentially, a function is only capable of returning one thing, not two. Is that clear for everyone? You can never, ever return two things with a function. It's impossible. C is not capable of doing that. You can play some tricks. 
Later on, we're going to learn that we can send the address of five th different things to a function and tell to the function to fiddle with them remotely. That's not returning. Returning is me giving you this. C language can only give something, one thing, to a person at the time, uh, to, to another function at the time using uh, a function. If, you, if I told you, pick that paper and the thing and off that table, I am not returning anything to you. I am telling you where they are. That's a different thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about returning something as a whole. Okay? If I want to do something like that, I can only return one thing. Are we okay with this? Now, let's go back to the functions that we want to teach next week and see how we can deal with this thing and bring functions into this one. First of all, I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to call it tools.c. So in this tools.c of mine, I am going to have some tools that I want to do stuff with. We've already done a get in thingy. Remember that? We had a get in. We had flush keyboard. Let's bring those things in. So we had flush keyboard. We had get int. So we had flush keyboard. All right. We had get int. Right? What else did we add? And we had a get mark, correct? So these are the things that we had. User is an idiot, so flush the keyword. Let me, <laughs> let me remove that thing. OK? All right. <clears throat> Do I, should I go through this get int and explain again how it works? Anybody wants me to go quickly through it? OK. Now we, we need to get some double values over there, right? So I'm going to actually play it very easy. I'm just going to copy this. Uh, yes. If you have time, can you do the thing? Oh, yeah, sure, of course, no problem. So when I want to get an integer, what do we, first of all, let's see what is flush keyboard. Flush keyboard is when user enters unexpected information through the keyboard that scanf cannot pick up. If that happens, because scanf cannot pick up those information, scanf fails in reading, which means it's not going to read anything, or if it reads something, it's going to stop at the point that it can't read anymore and quit. The rest of the information remains in keyboard. We want to be able to wipe out any existing garbage that we have in keyboard that we don't need. That's why we wrote flush keyboard. How does it work? Because we know anything that gets typed on keyboard is a type of a character. So reading a character never fails. When you read one character, it can be anything and it can read it. No problem. That's why I create a character. I call it new line because I want it to be new line. If it's not new line, I want to keep reading. Why? Because any information that is entered in keyboard enters with an enter key that is new line. So I'm going to read one character, check. If it's not new line, I'm going to read another. If it's not new line, I'm going to read. So I'm going to keep reading until it's through new line. Hence, the keyboard gets wiped out. OK with that? Flush keyboard. Now, how get int works? Get int works almost the same way. I, to see if a person is entering an integer properly, I will write a scanf and put a percent D and a C back to back. The first one is supposed to pick up the integer, and the second is supposed to pick up backslash and enter immediately after, because that's how a proper integer is entered. 1, 2, and hit enter key, 12 is going to go in. 9, 5, and enter key, 95 is going to go in. If I say 9, 5x and press the enter key, that's not a right thing, right? So percent D, if it can pick up the integer, it will pick up the integer, and percent C will get exactly what precedes it. Now, if to make, because the scanf will fail if user starts from garbage, I'm putting some pre-value in new line to make it false. If scanf fails and cannot read anything, it has to have some false value in it so I can detect. 
So I'll check if the new line is not backslash and it means user entered garbage information. Flush the keyboard, get rid of it, show the message, do it again. If user again did not enter it properly, backslash and is not back, new line is not backslash and flushes the keyboard, invalid entity gets, gets it again. If user finally comes to senses and enters properly, this will hold new line, it stops. Because it's new line, there's no garbage in keyboard, comes out, returns the value, life is beautiful. Okay? And that is to get a valid integer. But to get a valid integer, but to get a valid mark, I have to do com something completely different, which means I will first force the user to give me an integer. So that's one thing that I've already done, get int. I'll get the good integer. Then I'll check to see if the integer has a valid value in it. So get int guarantees that I will get an integer. But is that integer a good value? I'll check that. If it's not, I'm going to mention, hey, enter a good value and get it again. So the logic is the same. This logic is for any validation of any type. OK? So I'll get the integer again and keep going until user comes to the senses again, and then it returns the value. Now, what I wanted to say is that I want the exact same thing to happen for doubles too. So what I'll do, I'm just going to copy this, and I'm just going to paste it down here. And in here, I'm going to say get double. OK? Or double. Because it's getting a double, I am returning a double. Because it's returning a double, the value will be double, right? New line remains new line. The only thing that I'm half supposed to get is LF over here instead of D. And in here, it's invalid double. Try again. And I think it's done. Oh, thank you, LF. There you go. That's called hacking a code. Hacking is not always writing viruses. Okay, hacking a code is to get an already existing code, hack it and make it different. And that's what I did. Easy. Now I want to get get mark. So get mark will be get a double mark. Okay? And double mark is essentially the same. Instead of int value, I have a double value. And in here I'm gonna have a double value. So get int is gonna be get double in here. Yes, and this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't done it yet. I, that's why I was highlighting it, so I can oh, do this. Oh, OK, well, thank you. OK, invalid mark. Try again. So there you go. Now I have these two functions written for doubles, too. So now I have these things. I am going to bring it to my C program to make it better. First, I need all the prototypes there. So I'm going to do copy, and I'm going to come up here. I don't know which one I'm going to use. That's why I'm going to bring all of them. And remove the body, only the name. That's the prototype for a function to introduce the function so this program knows the functions exist so the compiler won't whine about it. And when it comes to actually finalizing the compilation, it finds the code of those things in tools.c, and we are good to go. So now, instead of having a scanf for num over here, I'm going to say num <coughs> is set to get int, right? I'm getting an integer. And uh, for a student number, again, I don't need scanf in here. So this becomes get int. Right? This one becomes get double, but a double mark. Correct? If you see I'm, I'm talking gobbledygook, let me know. OK, so I don't need this. No scanf. Get another double mark. No scanf. And get another double mark, right? Now I'll come down here. I'm going to say while not done, I need to get the student again. So that's going to be a get integer. All right. 
And oh, in here I'm saying done searching. I like to have a yes or no. I want to have a function to tell me one, give me true when it's yes, give me f zero, false when it's not yes. So let's write the function. Why do I have one or zero? It's not a good thing. So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say uh, int yes. I have a function. It's called yes. It's going to ask the user, look for the yes or no to come in. OK? So how do I do that? I'm going to have a character, right? And I'm going to call that character ch. Uh, and let's get the character. So I'm going to say scanf percent c, right? And wait a minute. The next thing that comes after the character, what it's supposed to be. So yes will be either a y hit enter or an n hit enter, right? So the second character must be backslash n. So the logic looks exactly like the other one. So in here, I'm going to have character uh, new line, exactly like that one. And I'm going to set it to x. I don't even need to do that. But anyways, I'll do it just to make sure. Anyways, so uh, percent %c and percent %c again. So in here is going to be address of ch and address of new line. So now that it's getting it, I'm going to say while. OK. How do I know if it's right or not? Not new line. I have to make sure that it's yes or no. What is a valid yes or no? So if it has to be either y or n, anything other than that is not right, correct? Right? So I have to, what is the, what is the, it, uh, in here I have to have the bad condition and then say over here printf only y or n is acceptable. Right? And then retry or redo, okay? And then do this again. This is what I'm supposed to do, right? Correct? So the very first thing that I need to do over here is this. I have to say, if ch is not equal to y, and ch is not equal to capital Y, and ch is not equal to lowercase n, lowercase n, and ch not equal to uppercase n. OK? So if it's neither this one, nor this one, nor this one, nor that one, that's a bad thing. Yes? See, OK, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. OK, let's see actually if it's correct or not. I want this condition to be bad, OK? So what I'm saying is that it's, if it's not y, and it's not this one, and it's not that one, and if it's or, then it will be all these things should, should together should go true, which means it should be neither y nor n, neither, neither of them, right? So it's neither of these. So if it's any of these things, any of these things, right? Or new line is not equal to backslash n. Right? Either this is not backslash n or this is not happening. Do you see? The reason that I'm giving you this yes thingy to confuse the heck out of everyone with this thing is to show you how difficult it is to write a reliable user interface. Usually, usually your business logic takes what? 40%, 30% of your time for programming. 70% of your time 
what we pass to make sure that the user won't do something stupid. That's the thing. I don't know if my logic is right or not, quite frankly. I'm going to do it and test it. If it's not, then I'm going to do whatever, OK? So this is just something that is coming to my mind and I'm trying to do it, OK? So now in here, if, if I'm at this stage and new line is not equal, so if the problem over here is that it's possible that user enters what? X and hits enter. So C picks up X and that picks up new line, right? This becomes true, it comes in, but new line is new line. It means there is no garbage in the keyboard. So in here, I cannot just wipe out the keyboard. I cannot just flush the keyboard. I have to actually make sure that I should flush the keyboard. So I have to say if new line is not equal to backslash n flush keyboard. Do I have, is it flush keyboard? Yeah. Oh, because I don't have it on top. Let me bring yes down. <coughs> All right, so flush keyboard. All right, so when it comes out of here, now I have to return true if it's either capital Y or lowercase y, right? So the rookie way of doing it to say if CH is set to Y or CH is set to capital Y, then I have to say return 1, right? Otherwise, return zero. Is that correct? Are we okay with this? I did two wrong things. Number one, I have two return statements. Big no-no. You're not allowed to have more than one return statement in a function. Big no-no. Okay? So I should have created a variable up there and did something so on and so forth and set it to true or false and then return that one. A flag. But think about it. I'm saying if this is true, return true. If this is false, return false, right? So why don't you just return that? You are saying if it's one, return one. Is it zero, return zero? So return that. Return the whole thing. So instead of doing that, I can just do this. Correct? If CH is Y, so this condition says CH is Y, or that one, it becomes 1, right? So it's going to return 1. If it's neither of these, this will be 0, right? So it's going to return 0. Why do I write an if statement at all? OK? So now, hopefully, I have a yes. OK? So now in my program over here, I'm going to say done searching. In here, I'm going to say yes or no. And then do like that. OK? So, and then in here, I'm going to say done is, if I say yes, it's going to be reversed, right? Done when it's not yes, correct? So I have to say done is not yes. Right? So if done searching, they're going to say yes. When it's yes, done has to be one, correct? So I'm going to reverse it. So done is not yes. Ta da! And now I, my, my, my program actually will go that way. I'm not going to test it now um, because we don't have much time. We have 15 minutes. Actually, I can. Let me, just, let me just compile and run it for a second, see how many millions of errors I'm going to get. Oh, it actually runs. Enter the number of students. Let me see if it's the right one. Invalid entries. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to go only two. Student number one, two, three. That and this. And this, student number 234, that, and this, and this. Enter student number. Didn't I say two? Oh, that's the search. Bad programming. I should have actually said entering search or whatever. Searching. So enter student number. I'm going to go one, two, three. So it's going to show one, two, three. Done searching, yes or no. I'm going to put garbage. Let's see what happens. 
hit enter. Only yes or no is acceptable. Redo. Okay. Now I'm going to say no. N. Hit enter. Press any key to continue. So done searching. No. So I made some. I made a mistake. I have to find out what's wrong with it. Okay. There's something wrong. I'll find it out. I don't want to waste time on that. Well, we'll see. It doesn't matter. All right. I'll walk through it. There's something wrong in my logic over there. I'll find it out and we'll do it. Don't worry about it. But what the point I wanted to make. You see all this. What is the purpose of this highlighted area? What is the purpose of that highlighted area? What is the goal of that highlighted area? Can anybody tell me? Come on, be a hero. Tell me. In what? In that struct. What is the name of the struct? Uh, Student marks. Yeah. So it's to get student marks, correct? Yes. Yeah, to receive student marks, to get student marks. Wait a minute. I said that a function can return one thing, right? That one thing could be a big thing. It doesn't have to be only an integer. I can return a structure. So let me see if I can do, if I can do it right. So instead of that, I'm going to say over here, so. I want the function name is get student marks, right? It's not uh, ret receiving anything. What does it return? <laughs> Stupid compiler. I love it that you're actually looking at what I'm writing. OK, good. So get student marks, OK? What does it return? It returns student marks, right? So I have to say struct student marks. And the rule of returning, whenever you return something, immediately create and return. So I'm going to say student marks. Oh, uh, sorry, struct. Struct student, student marks. Uh, marks and return marks all right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come over here highlight this code X and put it right in here so instead of having that array I'm gonna say marks student number get int So I just change this left thing to what I had as a and see what I have now. I have so I have struct student mark marks, then I say student number. I put the, the integer that comes in in STNO of marks. Then I put the, the mark in IPC mark of marks, ULI marks of marks, EAC marks of marks, and when done, I return the, the, the structure, correct? Now, in this loop of mine that I have 55 things, all I need to do is to say, what was the name of the array? ST marks, right? So I'm going to say ST marks I is set to get student marks. Ta -da. See how elegant the code is now? I don't have all those 55 different things. All I need to do, look at it, is I'm going to say, please enter the number of students, num, get, get integer, correct? So I get an integer. Then please enter the, 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 the marks, and I'm going to show it. Then I'm going to get the student marks and put it in the marks. Done. So it works exactly the same way. Problem with this? Are we okay? That's that. I have 12 minutes, so I can debug that uh, yes thingy. Okay? So let's see what was wrong with it. So now I'm going to save it. Okay? I'm going to save this. Let me just compile and make sure it works. All right, it compiled. 
Now to test that, let me, I'm going to show you how you actually test the function. What is a good thing about having a function and testing it? Okay? I don't have to write the whole program. This is called writing a unit test. So I'm just going to just remove this. I'm going to remove this from the project. I'm going to say uh, pro program, remove. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to remove it. So it's removed, right? So in here, I'm going to add another one, new item. And in here, I'm going to call it yes test. Dot C. That's all it does. I'm supposed to just test the yes thingy over there, and I'm not going to do anything else. So what I need what I need to do over here is this. I'm going to write int main void. I'm going to write uh, return zero. And what I'm going to say is this. Uh, uh, int yes void. That's the uh, the prototype for yes. Correct? Where is it? Where's yes? Oh, I have to put a void in here. I forgot. Are we okay with this? Now in here, I'm gonna do this. Printf. Yes. If yes. printf yes else printf no okay so that's my tester I just run this test to see if it works or not okay so I'm gonna go step by step see what I did wrong So let's bring this one over here. So I'm going to just go right into it, print yes. Now I'm going to go to the function yes. CH is garbage, new line is new line. I scan for the value. So now in here I'm going to put uh, Y. Okay, hit enter. Okay, so now this condition will be false, correct? Why is it false? Because I said if ch is not equal this and, 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 right? Because this became true, this became false, false and anything is false, the rest of it, so th this is all false. New line not equal to backslash n, that's false. The whole thing is, the whole thing is false, correct? So this is not going to happen, which means it's, it's good, right? It comes out, and is ch is equal to that or that? True. So yes is true. Down to this point, it works, actually. We come over here, print yes. So it actually printed yes. That looks okay. That was... Case one. Case two, control F5, run it again. So now I'm going to do, oh, I, sorry. Uh, let me just, I, I'm not going to walk through. I'm just going to say N and hit enter. No. So yes and no work properly. Okay. So now what I need to test over here to see if it actually works properly with uh, 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 garbage collection. So now in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to do this. Yes or no acceptable. Redo, I'm going to say why. It says yes, whatever. It's actually working. Control F5. Garbage. I'm going to say no. So my yes works. It wasn't the yes that had problem. I had problem over there in my program. I have to find that out. So now I know that yes thingy works. All right? Now I'm going to go back to my program. So remove that yes test and add the existing item that is the program that we have written. And take a look at it and see what takes going on. So what did I do in here? I'm going to say done searching. 
yes. If they say yes, done, oh, it should be not. Yeah, I didn't, why did I say, why did I put not again? That was like, I came with the cuckoo logic with that. Why did I put not? I don't know, my brain didn't work at the time. So done searching, yes, so I'm done. Yes becomes, so now it works. All right, so that not thingy didn't work, uh, was, was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. All right, anyway, so that's it. Now we have a foolproof program that works and nobody can crash it. You can type anything you want and uh, uh, it's gonna go through everything perfectly. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. So should I stop recording? Or you, as soon as I stop, somebody's going to come over here with a question. So all those who want to come over here with a question, ask me now, forever hold your peace. Yes. Oh, set it, set values in a structure. I did not mention that. Set values in a structures like this, either like this, set it one by one individually, or initialize it. But when you initialize, the values you put in curly brackets must exactly match the values that you have over there. So int to int, int to int, int to int double to double, and array exactly to array. But this is only for initialization. It doesn't work for, for setting, all right? It actually does work for setting, but let's not do it, OK? <laughs> let's not do it. If you want to do setting, do it for now like this, all right? Questions? All right, we have time.